better life. An unexpected pregnancy can turn a young woman's life upside down. The House of One in Faith in Ocala gives these young women a place to live in privacy and comfort under the Christian care of counselors who will guide and protect both the woman and her unborn child. The House of One in Faith is confidential, loving, and free. For more information, call 352-687-8895. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Left minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Sorry I took so long to turn the microphone on. I'm trying to get in the uh, streaming video here a picture of Princess Diana. Boy, she was a pretty lady, wasn't she? Oh, my goodness. How come, how come we have some people in this world that are just so beautiful in every way, not just physically? And she, yeah. But she was a really wonderful lady, wasn't she? And then when she died, Super. oh, my gosh. That's why it broke all of our hearts when she died. Time stopped. That's, Nobody was that's anywhere I, except in front of the you, TV. You just, I mean, this lady was trying to stop uh, landmines, you know, from, from hurting children. You know? I mean, my gosh. Uh, it's just amazing to me how some people capture our um, attention, whatever, and, and, and warm us and then, dis- and then disappear. Um, my notes say that in 1991, inside London's Kensington Palace... Diana, Princess of Wales, participated in a series of secret interviews recorded with her permission by a close friend on behalf of journalist Andrew Morton. Morton was writing a book about Diana's life to reveal what life was really like for the most photographed woman in the world. The public was unaware that uh, Princess Diana, um, the marriage to Prince, what was his name again? Charles. Charles, thank you, was uh, at a crisis uh, point. So National Geographic made a documentary out of those interviews, and I believe you can see it. Give me, help me out here, Robin. Uh, when is it going to be on? Uh, this Monday, the 14th at 9 p.m. on the National Geographic Channel. Tom Jennings is on the phone. Tom is a Peabody Award-winning filmmaker of 1895 films and the executive producer of the National Geographic documentary, Diana, in her own words. Tom I, you know what, Robin watched it. I, I know she sent it to me, but I, I don't look at my email. I need to do this. <laughs> Good morning, Tom. How are you? I can't wait to see it now. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Larry. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate being here. See, one of the things about doing a radio show is you get this, these privileges of seeing things early, and I always miss yes. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't see this one, but Robin did, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. Th- was this a surprise to you? Did you know that these interviews took place? I did know. I knew about the book um, from way back when. You know, when the book came out in '92, um, the Morton's book, which was based on these recordings, um, everybody at the time said basically called him a liar, you know, that this wasn't true, that, uh, you know, the, none of this could be possibly going on, because, you know, the book detailed so many problems that were going on, everything from bulimia to suicide attempts to Charles seeing another woman throughout their marriage, even prior to their engagement. And um, I, uh, and it wasn't until after Diana died that Morton said, well, guess what? The source for all of this was actually Diana herself. And that's when everyone became aware that there were tapes. Oh, my goodness. And so, yeah, I, kn- I knew about the tapes. Um, I never really thought that we would have access to them. But it's one of those uh, where, you know, you never know until you ask. And uh, I talked to his publisher in London, Morton's publisher in London, and said, look, we're going to do this in a very different way. We're going to do it in a way where Diana is the narrator. No one else is going to be talking other than media reports from the time. There's going to be no pundits weighing in on what did she mean or Uh why was uh this 
we're just going to let her tell the story. And mm. that was how we were able to convince them to trust us with, uh, you know, really historic material. Wow. That's how we got it. Wow, that is fascinating. And, and, and I'm sure that he was, uh, he was probably flabbergasted at the fact that people weren't believing him. Andrew Morton, I mean. He, I mean, he must have been. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I talked. To, uh, you know, I've talked with him. Uh, you know, in 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 this process, and it, it, he wasn't surprised because you know the information that was put out was so damning. But uh, he was surprised that uh, so many people just uh, out now didn't believe him at all. Yeah, he said he yeah. had confirmed it through other sources. But he, uh, you know, uh, being a good journalist at the time, he he never revealed that it was Diana herself that. You know, was the one that told him everything do we, through these rec- Do we do we know? Does Diana herself tell us anything that helps us understand why she wanted to take these very private things and make them accessible to the public? Yeah, she had reached a point where uh, you know the marriage was just kind of a farce. They were really not you know, uh, practically not living together. Uh, she knew that Charles had this on again, off again thing with a woman named Camilla Parker Bowles, who Charles is now married to, and she knew that was back on full. And she had reached a point where she was actually coming into her own in 1991. You know, it was uh, part of people think part of these tapes are. Uh, done out of frustration, and I think that's true, but I think part is uh, she didn't know how else to get her story out, that people should know what was really going on, and it was her way of stepping outside of the palace walls, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and saying, look, you know, what you think is true is a lie, and I'm going to tell you the real story. Did you uh, show this to Prince William and Prince Harry? Did they give their blessing? No, they haven't. Uh, we've told them about it, but they have not seen it yet. No, and uh, it's not going to air in the UK for a while. Uh, the oh, U.S. Nice. air is, uh, yeah, the U.S. air is uh, coming up uh, Monday night uh, on National Geographic. But uh, the, you know, there's been so much, as you guys know, there's so many programs out right now that I think uh, uh, the network wants to, you know, make sure that this one is set apart from everything else, especially in the United Kingdom. How did you feel when you were putting this together? This had to have some kind of emotional toll on you. It did, uh, Robin. It really did because, you know, I, I knew her story pretty much like everyone else knows her story, you know, having followed it. But... Uh, there are seven hours altogether of recordings uh, that she made over about a six-month period. And uh, there's almost 60 minutes of her talking in this two-hour film. And uh, the, my experience with it was I had no idea how introspective she was at that time, where she really was trying to, you know, she was 31 when she recorded the tapes. Remember, she was 19 when she got married. Mm-hmm. And um, she was trying to figure out, well, why am I this way? Why did I have the bulimia? What triggered it off? She really was at a point in her life where she realized that, you know, what was past was that she needed to put in the past. She needed to figure out where to go with her life from that point forward. So I was amazed. The one thing that really amazed me was she was very introspective and self-reflective. And that comes out in the film where she's questioning herself the, uh, yeah, the entire yeah. time that these recordings are going on. What, I, what I've always been impressed by with her is that she had an opportunity to do good in the world because of her elevated position, because of her relationship with royalty. And a lot of people who reach positions where they can do something kind of don't. They, they uh, mm-hmm. you know, they, they might, you know, they might host a Jerry Lewis telethon or something like that. Yeah. But they don't really do a, a as much as she was trying to do what what is her back i mean where did she come from how did prince charles and her get together did he see her at a party or something hey baby (laughs) 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 how'd that happen Uh, well kind of actually he did (laughs) but you know she comes from uh royalty you know her family diana spencer the spencer family has been around for hundreds of years in the uk and so she, as a child, used to go over to uh, visit the Queen, for example. And so she 
was in those circles uh. and actually Charles dated her sister, her older sister Sarah for a while, for two years in his quest to find a queen. And so he had met Diana when she was actually 16 years old at a party, at a dance, and uh, met her again when she was 19. Um, but when you mentioned her, you know, uh, causes like uh, she was, uh, if you recall, she embraced uh, a patient with HIV AIDS uh, right. in the late 80s when people just didn't do that. She came from a broken home. Her parents had divorced. She always felt like she was an outsider. And so the reason why she was able, which you learn about through her own words, is she embraced these causes, like land, things that people wouldn't want to take on because they mm. were not popular. She did it because she felt like that was her role. She was the outlier. She was the one that said, hey, you know, if I'm going to get all this publicity, I'm going to help people who wouldn't be helped otherwise. Just think how much she's done. Yeah, and no offense, Charles, but you haven't done much, okay? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. We'll, we'll, I'm going to look forward to it. Robin well. says this in my email, so I'm going to look at it before everybody else and just know that I did. And, and then <laughs> mo Monday, the rest of us can see it on, on National Geographic TV. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Robin, for watching it. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Tom Jennings, thank you for being on the air with us today. 9 o'clock, August, uh, August 14th, Monday. Monday, on the National it's Geographic Monday. Channel. Um, thank you, Diana, in her own words. Thank Very you, well. Tom. All right, we'll, okay. be, we'll be right back. Okay. Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. North Korea doubles down on threats against the U.S. territory of Guam. The state-run media said there would be four intermediate ballistic missiles that would be fired over Japan that would be landing off the coast of Guam, some 19 to 25 miles, they say. Still finalizing this plan, according to that state-run media, they say it could be handed over to the leader, uh, Kim Jong-un, within the next week or so.